So here we can see that that has become the master. All these guys are configured, obviously. And then this selected, this means that it's a candidate to take over for the master if the master were to fail. And if we do a do show run include NTP, we see all of these devices. And we'll talk about this guy in just a second here. So let's have some fun and throw in a few more NTP servers. This one is going to be in Minnesota. It's at the U of M. This guy is going to be in Missouri. And the reason I chose that is because I like the name. <laughs> Yellowcheese.com. Oh, I didn't find it. Well, your name is so cool that it couldn't resolve it. And then this guy is in Australia. And I grabbed him because I like Rad Raging Fist as well. So now let's go ahead and do show NTP association. And you can see we have five of these guys set up. And what's interesting here is that this guy right here is not working. So he's configured, but you can see one of the problems is that we see that the reference clock is quad zero. So we see that that's no good. And the stratum is 16. If the device you're trying to get time from is showing up as a stratum 16, that means it's not working. You're not gonna be able to get time from that. So I don't know if it needed time to sync or if that just guy's just not gonna work. Looks like he's not going to work. That might be my raging fist. Again, it would be nice to correlate the IP addresses with the names you put in. But anyways, this is what you might see in production is that you would have a number of NTP sources because you wanna have redundancy in case one of these, these fails, another one will go ahead and pick up the slack for you. All right, so let's go ahead and do show. I have to make sure my fingers are on the right keys. Do show run include NTP. And again, this will show us our NTP servers that we have configured. But what we wanna look at here is is this clock period you're probably thinking well we didn't configure this where did this come from well Cisco iOS automatically configures this for you what this is is it's basically a correction factor and you really don't want to mess with this. You don't want to set this manually. And a lot of the Cisco documentation says that when you're applying configurations to devices, do not include this because this is a, it's an error calculation. So iOS, it's going to calculate this and automatically add it to your configuration. So don't worry about it. Don't touch it. Don't try to manually configure it. And if you're pasting this configuration into another device, you might want to strip this out prior to doing that. Okay, so everything is hunky-dory on R1. Let's make sure, let's do a show clock detail and we're getting good time. So let's jump down to R2 here. And if we do a show clock detail here, you can see that we don't have a time source that we think it's 2002. So now what we want to do is we want to make R2 a client and we don't have a routing protocol set up. So we don't have a way to get the internet from here. If you remember back to the drawing, R1 was connected to the internet. So there's no way to get here, but we can get to R1. So if we go into configuration mode, we do an NTP server. And then the IP address is going to be 10.12 or 10.1.12.1. Hit enter. Go ahead and break out of this. Now, if we do a show clock, that's not looking good because we're still seeing March 1st up here. Oh, here we go. We show clock detail. Booyah. So we're getting NTP time. Cool. We do a show NTP association. We can see that we have that we're using R1 as our clock. And it's pretty cool because it's telling us where R1 is getting its NTP from, and that is from this 204 address. And it's stratum two. If we go back to R1 and take a look here, let's just Okay, we can see that this this is a stratum one device, this 204 address. It's a stratum one device. We go to R2, we see that this is stratum two because we're getting it from R1. So you can see how the stratums work. R1 is getting it from that public NTP server, and that public NTP server is getting it from a stratum zero device. So you got your zero, one, and two here. Do a detail if you want. But you notice the thing that we didn't do is we did not have to go on to R1 and say, make me an NTP server. That's one of the interesting things with NTP is that if you are getting time from an NTP device, you're a client. As soon as you become a client, you're also eligible to be a server. All we did here was we said, let's go ahead and make R1 our server and shabam. It's suddenly a server. So it's interesting. It's good to know because you look at the commands here and you might think, oh, you know, I've got to set R1 up as a server and then make it a master. And then, you know, basically you can just keep going on down the line. And then you can see here if we do a show NTP status, that if we were to go down to R4 and then peer to R2, it would be a stratum three device. So that's one of the little idiosyncrasies with NTP, a little bit different than what we're used to with client server relationships. But the cool thing about it is that it makes it very easy 
to have all the devices in your network yet accurate synchronized time because you just need to peer to a neighbor upstream who can peer to another upstream neighbor and you know everything is going to flow down that way so now what if it's the case that you don't have access to the internet you can't get a public ntp server and you still want to have accurate time on your network well you're going to lose some accuracy but you'll still be able to synchronize everything up what you want to do is you're going to set up one or more of your devices as ntp master time sources and so the way we do that is we go into configuration mode and we're on r3 here if we do a do show clock we can see that it's still thinking that this is you know march 2002 do ntp master question mark so your only choice here is to set the stratum number and if you hit enter it's going to use stratum 8 i would suggest that you do that or if you want to change it i would not use stratum 1 or anything like that so if you do eventually configure your device to be a client of an NTP public server and you have this set as stratum 1, chances are that's going to be lower than what you pointed to on the internet and you're going to get less than accurate time. So just go ahead and hit enter and take the default. Let's go ahead and do uh, do show clock. Ah, no magic, huh? Do show NTP associations. Well, that's interesting. What is this? So what we're doing is that we're associating with ourself. This 127 address is ourself, and it's saying, hey, I'm getting time from myself. Stratum 7, and that's a, kind of the goofy bit here, is that when you hit enter, it's going to be a stratum 8 device. Well, really, your time is going to be stratum 7. That's your internal clock, but anything you advertise to is going to be a stratum 8. So if we do a show NTP status, you can see here that it's going to be stratum 8. So if we peer R4, which we're going to do in just a second here, to R3, it should show up as a Stratum 8 NTP device. Show clock. You'll notice the difference here is that we got rid of our asterisk, so we're not confused. But if we do a show clock detail, it says the time source is NTP. Well, that makes sense. We are our own time source. So prior to doing this, you're going to want to go ahead and set your clock. And the way that you do that is with the clock set command. And it's a little interesting. It's from privilege exec mode. And then you're going to want to go ahead and put in the, the hour, minute, seconds. In this case, it's going to be 19... 25 on the 18th of November 2010. Nah, I actually screwed up. It's the 17th, it's not the 18th. And the reason why I screwed up is if you take a look at the clock here, you'll see that this time is accurate for the time currently in Minneapolis, which is Central Standard Time, but we provide time in NTP in UTC. So we really do need to set this to the accurate UTC time. And this period here means that the clock is authoritative, but NTP is not synced. Well, obviously, we don't have anything to sync this with, so that's what we're going to show here. So let's go to R4, and then we're going to go ahead and configure. Oh, what is it? 34.3 as our NTP server. Do a show clock detail, and here you go. We're getting our time, but this is not accurate UTC time. So what we want to do to make that accurate is we're going to do a show clock on R1. Grab this. Go to R3 and do a clock set. Use that for the time. 18 November the next day. And do a show clock detail. And now we have a different time. We show the UTC time. So if we go over to R4, let's see if it picked it up already. It has not. Now remember, it's going to pull every 64 seconds. So it's going to take a little while for that to sync up. But I guess the big takeaway here is if you are making your Cisco device into an NTP master clock, make sure that you have the time set and make sure that you have it set to accurate UTC time because that's what it's going to share out. So while we're on R4, let's go ahead and configure another NTP server and let's make R2. So it's 10.124.2 as an NTP server. Show NTP associations. And you can see here that we now have R3 and R2 providing NTP, and it has chosen R2. Why is that? Oh, pretty simple. It's a lower stratum. So now let's go back to R3, go into configuration mode. Here's our NTP master command. And we had hit enter and chose stratum 8. Let's go ahead and be devious and make this a stratum 1 device. Now if we go back to R4, it's probably going to take a bit here. So I'm going to pause and let it go through a couple polling sessions. All right, let's see if it has figured out what's going on here. So yep, right now it has chosen R3 over R2. And the reason it did that is because R3 used to be 
a stratum eight and we use the default, but then we manually set it to be a stratum one. So it's gonna prefer that over the stratum three server. So that's the reason why you really wanna think about this before you set one of your Cisco devices as an NTP master. And when you do that, take into consideration that even though you're saying you're a stratum one server, you're gonna get more accurate time from the stratum three server. Okay, so what I've done is I've removed all the NTP configurations on routers R2, R3, and R4. And then I've enabled EIGRP for all of these routers with the exception of the interface that goes out to the internet. So what we're gonna do here is set up NTP for this network. We've got R1, it's going to be using multiple NTP servers out on the internet. So it's gonna be getting NTP time from those devices. And then we're going to go ahead and make R2 become a client of R1, and then R3 become a client of R1 as well. And then R4 will become a client of R2 and R3. I turned up all the loopbacks, so all the loopbacks are active, and we're gonna use a uh, command in NTP that I did not mention during the theory portion, and that is the NTP source interface command, so that all of our routers will advertise the loopback address when they're being used as NTP servers. Okay, so on R1, there's not much that we need to do. If we do a show NTP associations, we can see that uh, I did strip one of the servers that wasn't working. So all we have to do here is go into configuration mode, and if we do NTP and then invoke the help with the question mark, what we're looking at is this command here, source, configure interface for source address. So we're going to go ahead, source, and then we get all the interfaces we're going to use, loopback zero or not. Well, actually, don't need the interface. I just need to put in loopback zero. So I'm going to put in LO zero. When we jump over to R2, which is what we're going to do right now, and then we can set our NTP server. I'll just show you that we can ping the loopback address of R1. I'm going to go ahead and send a ping here. So now when we set up NTP server, 1.1.1 and then what we're going to do is we're going to do NTP source and we're going to make loop zero loop back zero our source as well so now if I do it NT do show NTP association this is R1 is now using that loopback address rather than the 10.1.12.1 address that it would normally use. And it's getting its clock from the internet and the internet clock is a stratum one NTP source, but since we're getting it from router one, it is now a stratum two for us. So we're gonna go ahead to R3 and do the same thing. Actually, I'm going to do a little shortcut and take a look at my history and just grab these two commands. And we take list association. So now R2 and R3 are both using R1 to get NTP time. Okay, so then on R4, we're going to go ahead and configure both R2 and R3 as our servers. 3.3.3, do show NTP associations. Okay, and we can see here that we are configured and we have a master, which is R2. And now the reason it took R2 is because it looked at both of these and said, oh, they're both stratum three, which makes sense. And so then it goes through a couple of checks. It makes sure that the uh, time from either of these isn't completely off base. But anyways, we went through that in the theory portion. But more than likely, the tiebreaker in this case is going to be which device it received communication from first. Since we configured R2 as the NTP server first, it most likely heard from it first. So that's why it is choosing R2 as its time source. So let's say for whatever reason that we don't want it to take R2, that we want it to choose R3. And one real quick aside here, if you want to remove NTP, if you're not just removing bits and pieces, if you want to take NTP off totally and completely, if you remove the servers, if you said no NTP server 2.2.2.2 and 3.3.3.3, you'd remove the servers, but actually NTP service is still running. If you want to disable NTP completely, you would just type no NTP and hit enter, and that'll strip out all your NTP configuration. And that's a good time saver if you're trying to just strip it out completely. It's also good for troubleshooting. If something's going goofy with NTP and you just want to start with a clean slate rather than just removing the individual servers and commands go ahead and use this and then re-add the commands in one by one so that maybe it'll help you pinpoint what the actual issue is but we're not going to do that here what we're going to do is we're going to say let's go back up to ntp server 3.3.3 so we want to make r3 our master how we can do that is if we invoke the help with the question mark is that if we use this command right here so if we say prefer Hit enter. Now let's do a show NTP associations and it is still preferring R2. Might take a second here. We can see here for whatever reason it went to Radom 16. So hopefully it's just thinking about what it's going to do. Okay, so it just took a while to think about it. I thought it was going to make a monkey out of me. So now we can see that these are both Stratum 3 servers. And because we've said to prefer R3, it's going to use that one over R2. As I discussed in the theory section, this does not seem to work if you have servers with different stratums. It's going to look at that stratum first and choose the lowest stratum regardless of the prefer. And we can show that here if we do NTP server 1.1.1. So now we're going directly to R1, which should be a stratum 2 server. And if we go ahead and do a 
show NTP associations. It's still thinking here. I'm going to pause just a bit. Okay, so I let it think about it for a few minutes, and it has now gone and preferred router 1 because that is the stratum 2. If we do a do show run include NTP, we can see even though we've told it to prefer R3, because R3 is a stratum 3 server, the uh, stratum is actually going to override that R1 stratum 2, so iOS is going to choose that.